Dr. Merkel, you have been a research scientist for most of your life. Hmm. Tell us, what exactly are life crystals and chondriana? Before I answer that question, I would like to direct your attention to any biochemical book which will tell you that the currency of energy in our cells are ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is produced by the mitochondria inside our cell. Now, what I have done, I extracted adenosine triphosphates and guanosine triphosphates, the cornerstone of life. These are components of our DNA molecules and make up the sequence in our DNA molecules determining what are we going to be. Now, I extracted these substances from off-the-shelf food items, mainly vegetable origin, like plants, tea leaves, for example. It's very easy to take ATP and GTP out from uh, green leaves and teas. Uh, the five carbon sugars I was extracting from organically produced fruit juices and fructose and glucose phosphates. Putting these components together came to existence life crystal. Now, life crystal is rejuvenating, restoring all the cell function across, across the cell membrane and all our enzymes are made of it. So when life crystal is given intravenously, it will clean out the blood vessel from cholesterol and sugar deposits because life crystal will depolarize the water and the water will lose its affinity to hydrophilic molecules and picking up affinity to hydrophobic ones. That means, in plain language, it will dissolve fats, cholesterol, waxes and clean out the blood vessels, therefore re-establishing circulation, respiration, nutrient flow, and the cell comes back to life and rejuvenates. And so how are people benefiting worldwide or, you know, throughout the world from your discovery? Uh, right now we're working uh, over a hundred clinics and hospitals with hundreds of doctors in some 40 countries. Uh, these are the first clinics who applied both life crystal and chondriana for human use. They're treating untreatable diseases, they're cleaning out blood vessels, eliminating circulatory problems, like claudications for the diabetics, so you don't have to amputate his legs, and the diabetics don't have to lose their kidney. Because once you restore the uh, circulation by dissolving the sugar deposits, restoring respiration and nutrient flow, the organs will recover the legs, the circulation will recover in the legs. Uh, the eyesight, we have diabetics, that eyesight returned, and um, uh, the, the list goes on. But now we, when we get to the chondriana, uh, we have to distinguish between the two products. Life crystal basically restores, rejuvenates, and, um, and, and, and uh, repairing damages. Uh, the chondriana has been synthesized from human genetic material via life crystal. Life crystal capable of picking up energy, life energy, storing it, and uh, uh, restoring the energy level what we used to have our atmosphere when the sun was young. Now, that capability of life crystal allowed me to synthesize the chondrianas from human genetic material, and they are our precursors. Uh, the chondrianas uh, are identical to cyanobacteria lived three and a half billion years ago. But they are human origin because they have been synthesized from human DNA molecule. Animals also have chondrianas and they are different from the human chondriana. Uh, a horse chondriana, for example, five times the size of a human chondriana. That immediately proves that we do not belong to the animal kingdom because already three and a half billion years ago has been decided that a horse is going to be a horse and a human being is going to become a human being. So that puts aside the theory of evolution then. It, it tosses that out of the door, does it? That's correct, yes, because each life form had its own primordial cells and its own cyanobacteria and each evolved independently that was decided already three and a half billion years ago. Now, because our chondriana is our precursor, our ancestors, they ought to protect the human body. They're super intelligent, far more intelligent than we are. The reason for it, because the higher order of life existed before us 
and we are going through devolution, not evolution. As we're losing the energy as the sun is cooling, our immune cells and our organ cells becoming punier and punier and punier. This is one of the reasons that we're hastening now um, due to the CO2 blanket, uh, the, uh, the energy decrease in the, our atmosphere. And this is why the epidemics are right on top of us, because our immune cells becoming punious and no longer can properly defending us. Now, uh, with this discovery, we can supplement the energy level what we're missing. Uh, what we have been deprived from, and we can restore our immune system, our immune cell, what it used to be, and bringing back the intelligent chondrianos, which are military, and they're capable of sequencing life, of uh, uh, producing military hardware in the form of immune cells, and defending you against untreatable diseases like cancer, AIDS, Epstein-Barr, and so on. Okay, your discovery was made in El Paso, Texas. Is there some significance to that? Uh, yes, uh, there is. It uh, was almost like a destiny because before I came to El Paso to retire in 1985, I was uh, doing research at Rijks University in Antwerp, Belgium. And that's where actually I discovered the, the engine of life, the syntrophic energy conducer. But when I retired in 1985 uh, in El Paso, first I came uh, and and, and uh, stayed in El Paso, which uh, where we had desert climate, and this product could not be made in any other place where you have desert climate. And I need 300, 350 year, I was rather 350 day uh, sunshine because the the process is a solar process, and the energy derived derived from the sun to produce the life crystal. From the other hand, the second day when I came to El Paso. I suffered my fourth heart attacks. Now, the first heart attacks I suffered in 1981. I was in Tampa General Hospital for 14 days on ICU and I almost died. Since then, I had four other heart attacks and Dr. PC gave me an angioplasty in 1985 in Sierra Medical Center in El Paso. And I was in um, uh, the operating room almost three hours, and he was ready to give up on me. But finally, he was able to open one plugged artery on the left side, and he said, I have to live with angina pain for the rest of my life because he couldn't get into the other ones. But however, the ones which he opened a few, the few years later collapsed, and I suffered my fourth major heart attack about uh, two and a half years ago. And all my arteries, four of them, was 98% plugged. And uh, I fired Dr. PC. I know, you're known um, worldwide as the man who fired the world's top heart specialist. What's the story there? Well, uh, because I started to take in life crystal. And I already noticed that uh, I'm cleaning up my uh, blood vessels and they were opening up. They intermittently opened up and um, uh, when they took me with the last heart attack to the hospital, I knew I'm on the way to recover. And it wasn't a full-blown heart attack because there was no damage done to my heart. And I was told that in the emergency room. And when he wanted to reel me in for open heart surgery for, give, uh, for, for, for bypass, I refused. And I fired him and then he said, uh, uh, the, the other doctor said, I will never make it home, I will die on the way home. They kept me in the hospital for three weeks and I had to sign all kinds of papers before they released me. And here I am today with clean arteries and a new heart due to life crystals. Wonderful. Well, we are going to discuss that more as the program progresses. But let me ask you now, Dr. Muller, you are a general practitioner and you're also the physician for the Life Crystals and Condriana project in Antigua. Um, tell me, what, how did you get involved in the Life Crystals and Condriana project? Purely by association with Mr. Emmanuel, who about three to four months ago took me to his home and showed me a video, gave me a manual outlining and detailing the type of work Dr. Merkel was doing. I read it from cover to cover. I understood the whole thing. I looked at the video more than once, and then I got some testimonials from what patients are saying, because I think from a clinical point of view, my 
assessment of it would not be in relation to so much of the scientific discovery made, but in actual fact, the application. And um, I read some of the things which were in there, and I became convinced that there was something in it, right? And on the basis of that, our, our association continued, that is, the association between myself and Mr. Emmanuel continued. He gave me more testimonials. He told me that Dr. Merkel was coming here. We had the film shown to some persons. And um, I became more and more convinced, not because we had had any kind of major success in terms of trials here, but in terms of what was going on worldwide, in terms of what was going on in Mexico, in even the United States, in Canada, in Greece, in Germany. I mean, those were sufficient proof. For, for one to look at it and, and look at it seriously. Yeah, well, we do want to hear more about those testimonials um, later on, and um, perhaps Peter could read them for us. But um, your assessment has been favorable, but tell me, have there been trials here in Antigua, and with what result? Yeah, well, um, the, in reading even the, the protocol for, for the study, it shows that um, one wouldn't get much results between, let's say, a 30, 90 day period, and even beyond, depending on the nature of the, the condition. We have had a number of persons who have had life, who have had life crystals, and a few who have had uh, chondrian, who take the life crystal both as the elixir and as the, the injectable. And um, we, are waiting the, the, we are waiting the results in terms of the assessment that we could make based on those because we only just started probably a little over a month ago. Okay, well, let me ask you, Mr. Emmanuel. Um, you are well known in Antigua as a holistic and skin care specialist, and here you are having been the initiator, and I take it you're also the, the director of Life Crystals, Inc. Um, how did you hear of Dr. Merkel? Well, uh, back in January of this year, I went to Philadelphia. I was called there by the Reviva company, which, you know, they, it was in the news, they made me the person here in the Caribbean for their cosmetic line. Uh, I went by a friend, and she was all riled up about my getting there, and she was all excited that this uh, Dr. Russell Brown was looking for me. So she called him. I said, do you have his number? She called him. He then came over, and the same Dr. Brown was a client patient of mine since 1972 in Philadelphia. And he told me, man, we've been looking for you. Uh, I have this tape. You must see it. I want you to meet this man, Dr. Merkel, who is saving, you know, and giving life. Well, he really took it out, you know, and gave me the tape. I saw the tape. The first time I watched the tape, believe me, I was not as turned on. I said, wait a minute. The next morning he called me, he said, did you see the tape? I said, well, I fell asleep part of it because I was tired. Watched the tape that morning before returning the tape, and my mouth flew open. I said, wait a minute, I am not seeing what I'm really, where I think I'm seeing it. Quite incredible. Isn't and it? I took it to someone who was a nurse, who was a nurse, and we watched it. And believe me, there's something else to see. When I saw that, I said, hey, I must get in touch with this man. So I called Dr. Brown, and I told him I must get in touch with Dr. Merkel. He said, well, we've been trying to get in touch with you so that I can turn you on to this gentleman. So I called Dr. Merkel, and back and forth, we made correspondence and so forth. I then asked Dr. Merkel, my second trip back to Philadelphia, I told him I would come up, if he didn't mind me coming out to El Paso and getting more involved with this thing, see what it's really, you know, get it from the horse then, from the horse's mouth, mm -hmm. so to speak. And I went out to El Paso and Dr. Merkel and I, he was very nice, very kind to us there. And the things that I saw and I heard was just 
too much for me. I said, I must bring it back here and share it with my people. And that's As exactly director of the, um, the, the, the Life Christians Project in Antigua, what are your plans for Life Christians itself and Condriana in Antigua? Okay. In Antigua, what we are doing, we have put a program together by way of the New Life Holistic Retreat Center where people, sick people, can come and be treated by Dr. Moulin and myself where we would clean up the deposit, clean up the disease, and people can go and live happily ever after, uh, so to speak. We will teach people how to select foods how to prepare foods, their meals, uh, how to really live a better lifestyle so that they will continue on their way to a better uh, way of living. And when I got Dr. Mullen involved, first of all, when I came back to Antigua, all excited, I went on the ZDK radio and I saw Dave and asked, and asked, could I go on and share this with the people? I went on and I put it out there and not one, not one phone call from anyone from the medical uh, people. As I found it strange that here's this man coming back to this country, said that I have in my possession, here in Antigua, the cure for just about any form of cancer known to man for the first time in the history of medicine we are able to help cure people with diabetes Epstein-Barr and many other diseases and no one picked up on it so uh, I then, okay on that on okay. that note let, let us take our break and when we come back we'll continue this discourse we remind our listeners that to get on to feedback one has to dial 462-0821 and for overseas viewers it's 462 that is 1462-1233 we'll take the break and come right back And we're back with feedback and our discussion tonight is on the elixir of youth the discovery of life crystals and chondriana and we have with us the nuclear scientist himself the renowned dr george merkel um dr merkel what by bringing this industry or the, the life crystals and chondriana project to antigua through um mr emmanuel what benefit will there be for Antigua? Well, basically, uh, we, um, we, we were doing the uh, clinical work since three years now worldwide. And I really strongly feel that we have to set up a, basis, a few bases around the world where we can uh, produce this product in large quantities and distribute it in specific areas. But I would like to see in, in Antigua a production plan and packaging plan where we can distribute the product and make it available to all the Caribbean islands and also getting into South America. And that would bring in um, a sizable uh, industry and economy into this island. And this island is uh, uh, it's, it's strategically located and it's very favorable due to its climate and um, uh, uh, the circumstances that I would like to see that production taking place here. So everybody would benefit. So the primary interest is really of uh, bringing the industry in here and, and, and my way of distributing this uh, God-given gift to the world to place it in countries and, uh, and uh, make the countries responsible for the local production and distribution, make sure that it will be available at affordable price to everyone who needs it. Okay, let's go straight to the telephone line and welcome Bolands on to feedback. You're on, Bolands. Good evening, gentlemen. I am very concerned, very, very concerned. Why, with such power in the hands of these gentlemen, no one thought it fit to approach the official medical association, chief medical officer, the government of Antigua, before we come in and start taking Antiguans again for 
I consider another ride. Have we got this stamp of approval from the FDA? We need to answer, ask a, a lot more questions, please, before we start going talking about setting up industries and making money. What is the relationship with all this, with the medical association, with the chief medical officer, with the health department? Uh, we want some questions answered. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Uh, Dr. Muller, let me take you first. Um, that is with the medical association here. Well, um, I would say that in relation to this program, Dr. Merkel, Dr. Merkel came here as a, a guest of Mr. Emmanuel. He brought his ideas via Mr. Emmanuel. And um, these, we then started from that point of view. Persons may see it in a different light in terms of our right. You should have gone through the medical association. You should have gone through the... But, but wait a minute here, Dr. Muller. Is this something that one will require a prescription for? Not at all. Well, could you um, explain to us sort of how it will work? Well, it's a situation where if the person uh, needs the particular product, the person will acquire the product and the only area that the, the, the doctor really comes in there is in the situation of administering the, the particular product, let's say the uh, injectable part of the product, because there's also the part that you take orally, which can be bought and taken like any, any wine, any tonic, which does not necessarily need a prescription. Dr. Merkel, you want to comment on the ah, Yes, question? of course I, uh, I would. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're already working with hundreds of hospitals and clinics to doing clinical studies. Uh, we also filed with a number of countries and registered the material. Canada is one, for example, we filed for the DIN numbers for all four products, the Candrianas and the Life Crystals, both injectable and the oral one. Now, uh, I have a manufacturing plant in the United States for the oral one where we don't put medical claim on it and we legally produce and distribute that and that is controlled by our federal government. The plant has been built to, to federal standard and controlled by the US FDA. Now, the adenosine and adenosine monophosphate already has been approved by the FDA a long time ago. That's the first uh, product they gave a patient uh, to the hospital when they have a heart attack and it's got three thousand dollar and there's three milligrams of adenosine phosphate derived from oil products synthetically made mine is coming out from tea from plants from vegetables process with solar energy and not, not chemical and solvents. It's much higher purity and much better product. So in besides that it already has been approved, adenosine phosphate in by the US FDA, but we also uh, respect uh, the wishes of the medical establishment. And we did file in Canada, in, uh, we are in a process of filing in Switzerland, in Hungary, in Australia, and uh, of course, uh, we agree to that, that we have to uh, uh, handle it in a professional way. And in due time, in due course, the medical establishment will be involved with it. Okay, we go back to the telephone line and we welcome Potters on to feedback. Potters, you're on feedback. Hello? Yes, you're on. Hello, good evening. Um, I'd like to ask a question. Um, does this um, life crystal cure every disease and um, we're in... Antigua, do they sell this product? I direct that to you, Dr. Mandel. The Life Crystal, there's two products. The Life Crystal will not cure any disease. The Life Crystal is restoring circulation, cleaning out the blood vessels, and restoring, rejuvenating uh, organs. Uh, but the Chondriana is the one which is curing every known disease. Uh, it's being used in uh, over 100 clinics of curing AIDS, epstein Bars. Um, uh, lupuses of different type, all the untreatable diseases. Not only that, but we have done it in sufficient number. More than 10,000 people took the treatment already. We have sufficient number of diseases that we already have statistical numbers, like 96% remission in case of breast cancer if the person did not use chemotherapy. If the person used chemotherapy, the remission rate drops to 40%. Why, if they 
use chemotherapy? Because chemotherapy is not only destroying the immune system, but it's also destroying your healthy tissues and your organs. And uh, by the time you, the, the, these patients come to you and they went through radiation and chemotherapy and all the orthodox treatment, they have no organs left to work with. They can't even take the treatment. Okay, let's go again to the telephone line and welcome Clearhall on to feedback. Yes, uh, good evening and uh, wish all, you all the best for a very good program. Uh, Dr. Morlin, first, uh, can you tell us something about your qualification? Uh, I'll, I'll go on from there when you tell me. Where are you qualified? I was... <laughs> Is it Cuba? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I Cuba, yes. did medicine in Cuba, sir. Okay, fine. Now, look, uh, there's something. I can remember, I'm just checking the checks and balances within the system. I remember some years ago, right, uh, not so long ago, yet, that uh, if you have one in the hospital and you're the doctor responsible for that ward, right, can you remove that person from the government hospital to any other place without notifying the parents? If one can remove a patient from the hospital? If one can remove the patient from the hospital to any other place without um, notifying... Clear Hall, does this question have any relevance? Yes, it has relevance, um, to very, topic. very much. Okay. No, not without the consent of the not patient the or the, the, the authorities at the hospital? That's right. I remember you were responsible for the, my mother when she was at the hospital. Mm. And she was removed and I got a phone call asking me to come to Ramco. And when I went down to Ramco, right, the, the operation, our operation was performing on her liver. And when I'm trying to find out who authorized her to go to Ramco up to today, nobody answered that. And you are responsible. No, for no, no. I have to deal with no, you. No, no, no. We, I'm, I'm just showing you when you have a loose system. No, no, no. When you I, have a loose system. I beg, I beg to differ, Mr. President. You understand? And when we have things like this, that this is the type of thing that we get. No, I, I beg. Why wasn't the hospital then? Wasn't the hospital I, equipped to do an operation? I beg to differ. I beg okay. to differ. She was a diabetic, I, right? And then they said you said that she had an abscess on her liver, I beg, and you had to take her to Ramco to to deal with her. The, our hospital were not equipped. I'm not I, 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 I beg with the well. I'm wish. just showing you, uh, Miss Moderator, how relevant it is. I wish to answer the question to have the checks and balances within the system properly in place. Yeah, but um, I yes, really I do not well. think I that wish, this is I the wish, time or place no, no, for I this make a discussion. I wish to make, yeah, I wish, I wish right because ahead. it was directed at me, I wish to respond. Okay. I worked at the hospital as a house officer. That means that I was under the direct supervision or the direct management of what is known as a consultant. Dr. Thwaites was my consultant. An Englishman, cardiologist, internist was my consultant. Any instruction in relation to your mother, the case I don't remember too clearly, but any, I, I remember of your mother, but I don't remember of the case. Any situation there in relation to draining any abscess or dealing with any abscess could not come from a petty officer in, term, in, the, in the health system. It would have to come directly from my supervisor. And Dr. Thwaites was then my supervisor. So there's no loose end there. Anything which was there, what happens is that when one goes to the hospital, one notices the house officer doing much more work than the consultant would really do because um, he's the little boss boy, so to speak. Okay, Dr. Muller, I'm afraid I'm going to have to cut yeah, you off you there. Right and um, Claire Hall, thank you for that call. And to the telephone, Hodges Bay, good evening. Thank you for your Hello? call. Yes. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. You can hear me? Yes, your question, please. Okay, there are a couple of questions. Um, this program is obviously quite earth-shattering in that claims are being made that I think will startle any nation. I am amazed that we're hearing this on feedback in Little Antigua with a population of 70,000 people, and we're not hearing it on BBC, where it's being exposed to London, or CNN or being revealed in the New York Times. Why it is that Dr. Meckel feels that Antigua is such a prime place to reveal this startling discovery?